Hey everybody, it's Eric from the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast and YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm sharing a time series forecast tool I'm developing to take advantage of the multiple expirations per week that SPX has to offer. Now, as you may or may not know, SPX will soon have five expirations per week. They have, it has three right now. Uh, and this tool is my take on using time series forecasting to increase my frequency of high probability trades for more income and account growth. Now, this is the first version of the tool and I'm excited to show it to you, but keep in mind, it's a work in progress. Uh, it's very raw version right now. Again, this is version one. And if you wanna keep up with the progress of it and I'll be updating the data and I, you know, I'll share it over time on the videos, be sure to follow the channel or subscribe, hit the like button, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get into the tool. Let me show you what I've been working on. So what I've done is I've taken some recent data over the last few weeks from SPX and I'm analyzing the price movement over a series of time. And you can see we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this is a, a typical week and I'm using 30 minute increments at this point. And again, I'm, I'm kind of playing with those incre increments, but right now it's 30 minutes and we're looking at the last few weeks. So what I'm looking for is are there any notable sort of consistent movement to where I can take advantage of either bullish or bearish. And the first one that I see when looking at this is really on Monday. Um, you know, the tendency over the past few weeks has been for Monday to sort of have a little bit of a pullback or at least sideways movement or something, and then sort of finding its footing. And then we get a rally or at least higher prices in general. Remember, this is all kind of in general over the next day or two. So now I've established kind of an opinion or a, sort of a directional bias over the course of this period. And we're gonna call it from you know Monday afternoon into Wednesday. And if I actually drill down in here, um, I'm gonna look at something like 1.30 p.m. on Monday getting long and you know it ba basically establishing my directional bias over the next day or two. And now I, since um, I can't take advantage of Tuesday expiration because they don't exist yet. They will, I think they actually start trading probably the, the week I put this video out. But the idea is we should be able to trade one DTE on Tuesday if we wanted to try that out. But in this point, I have to kind of just go with two DTE because that's all the expirations I have. I am working on a zero DTE model that looks more at smaller time frames for individual days, but I'll share that once that is ready. So I have my directional bias, and now I want to basically express that opinion, which my opinion at this point is that the market is going to be kind of bullish or at least not bearish over the first, you know, let's call it first half of the week, starting in Monday afternoon. So what I'm gonna do is go into the backtest program and we're gonna craft a trade that's gonna to try to take advantage of this. All right, so we're gonna dive into the option Omega backtester to kind of test our theory about how this would have done. And in case you missed it, on the podcast I interviewed these guys, I think it was episode 41, um, I'll have to double check that, but check the, uh, I think episode 41 or 40 of the Stock Market Option Trading Podcast if you wanna hear about option, a little bit more about Option Omega. But let's go ahead and get into it. I have some of the data set up already. I have the dates in place. We're gonna be trading SPX. And I've chosen a short put spread because even though our tool is suggesting that the market is going to go up during our period uh, that Monday afternoon through Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't necessarily think the market's going to rally hard where I, I want to buy a, you know, two day call option, but I'm really just want to maybe place a bet that the market isn't going to go down. And with a put credit spread, if the market does nothing, you can actually make money if it's out of the money. And if it actually goes up, you, you know, you can make money too. So it's a little bit, you know, quote unquote, safer, of a trade. So let's go ahead and set this up. Um, and so we have the date range, we have short put spread, and I'm just gonna go with something out of the money for an example for now, two days to expiration. We're going with 1.30 p.m. every week on Monday during the period. And this is a big portion of this um, type of trading that I'm more incorporating. We're gonna allocate $10,000 and we're only gonna risk 10% per trade. So what does that mean? That means whatever the credit we get for the credit spread, uh, there's gonna be a defined risk that's called the max loss. And typically you take the width of the spread, in this case five, and you subtract the credit and that's your max loss. So let's say we get a credit of a dollar. Well, your max loss is $400. So if I have a $10,000 account and I'm only gonna risk 10%, I'm only gonna take two trades because each, or excuse me, two contracts, because each contract is gonna be risking $400 in that case. So that's, uh, this is a 
big key about strike selection that I've finally been able to kind of get my uh, head, head around or at least articulate in a way I've been I've been doing closer to the money stuff in, for a while if you've been following me but anyway let's keep going we're gonna do a 50% profit target I'm they've they've added a bunch of things in here that I haven't taken advantage of I don't I do not have commissions and fees on there so keep in mind that with uh, these results will not have uh, commissions and fees taken out but just to kind of get a general idea we're selling this put credit spread in the afternoon on Monday and we're going to allocate 10% of $10,000 allocation to the strategy and let's go ahead and run it let's see what it does so it did not make money but we had a five out of six winners we had 83% win rate and we actually lost money so why is that right and the reason is, if we look at the trade log, when you sell farther out of the money put credit spreads, and now we're kind of getting into credit spread theory, um, as I mentioned, these particular credits were $1.15, $1.5, $1.10. So it could only take two contracts and your risk is greater. So what that means is when you're finally able to book profits, you have smaller profits and then you end up with that one large loser. Right. And this is very, you know, very common. If you've traded put credit spreads before or even call credit spreads, you, ha you can have a really high win rate, in this case, an 83 percent win rate. Uh, but you actually can still lose money because the, you get the kind of the big uh, the big swoosh. Now, some of you may say, well, what if, if we put a stop on there? And I am not a believer in stops because I think the gap risk uh, is too high and you will not get a good execution. So I don't even I don't I'm not even going to go go there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to sell closer to the money. Because remember, we're not trading options probabilities right now. We are using the time series forecast that I showed you earlier in the video to create a directional bias. So we're just we're just straight up getting long, right? We're getting long, but using uh, put credit spreads. And we're going to do delta 45. And that means that it's a little bit closer to the money. It's still out of the money. So the probability is still there. There's still a... 55% chance that expires out of the money, right? Um, and we're going to keep the same parameters just for illustrative purposes. We're going to we're going to do 10% allocation, and let's go ahead and see what that did. So what we did was sell by selling closer to the money. This trade actually turned profitable. Same win rate, right? Same five out of six winners over the period. But here's where the math gets good, right? So because we sold closer to the money. We got almost twice the credit. So remember before we were seeing a dollar ten or something like that. So this is almost twice the credit, which means that the max loss is less. And because we're risking 10%, basically a thousand dollars per trade to start off with, we're able to trade three spreads at a time because you're risking less. And because you're risking less, and I should say, excuse me, you're risking less per contract. We're still risking uh 10% of the account, but we are risking less per spread, which allows you to trade more. So when the trades do work, you're actually able to make more money. So now instead of one spread, one loser knocking out all of the trades, it only knocked out, let's call it two of the trades, right? But again, we are trading a directional bias. We're not just trading simple, um, you know, options probabilities. So if we're directionally biased, what happens if we go Delta 55 for the, for the short strike? What that means is that short strike is slightly in the money. And on a 2 DTE spread, it's probably one strike in the money, give or take, maybe two at the most, depending on their, where the price is at. So at this point, we need the market to go up at least a few points over that look back period. And again, we're going to take the same time. We're going to do 50% uh, profitability. Uh, taking profits at 50%. And now what happens is you're actually making even more money. So of our $10,000 allocation, less commissions, remember, um, we're actually pulled in $1,800. Same win rate, right? Same five out of six trades. Let's look at the trade log. Again, the credits are actually higher. The credits are almost a one-to-one -one because remember, if you're getting a $2.50 credit, you're risking $2.50. So it's a one-to-one -one sort of risk reward but you have a positive win rate because of our time series forecast tool. And if we look at the, uh, the gains here, we still get a big loser. That big loser still knocks out a couple things, but let's look at the number of uh, contracts traded. So because we are trading closer to the money, we get a higher credit, which means the max loss is more. 
or excuse me, is less, we're actually able to trade more contracts. So we're trading four contracts, and as the winners, 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 the account got big enough in the period that we're actually sized up to five contracts. And this is very common. Um, where you know eventually you're sizing up according to your your you know we're doing 10 percent right well eventually you're going to get that loser so the reason why this loser still knocked out let's call it one almost two trades is because we actually sized it up and then the system went back down but the fact that we're still able to maintain a positive uh profitability uh with the same win rate going in the money because of our directional biases i i think something going to be valuable moving forward so it's a work in progress let me know what you think in the comments hit the like button if you want to see the future updates and the the tool to be updated and i'll see you in the next video